Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you James Dunn in Betty Smith's A Tree Grows in Brooklyn with Connie Marshall on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a very well-known story which not only recently reached the top of the bestseller list, but won fame for its authoress almost overnight. She is Betty Smith, and her novel, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, is as engaging as its title. In this story, there's a theme which has always warmed the hearts of fiction lovers, the struggle of youth to fulfill itself. And in A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, this note is captured and held with great success. We are fortunate tonight to have starring in the role of John Nolan that very fine actor, Mr. James Dunn, and in the role of Francie, Miss Connie Marshall. And now, Frank Goss, have you a word about Hallmark? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar, for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting James Dunn in Betty Smith's A Tree Grows in Brooklyn with Connie Marshall. There's a tree that grows in Brooklyn. Some people call it the tree of heaven. It grows in boarded-up lots and out of neglected rubbish heaps. It survives without sun, water, and seemingly without earth. It would be considered beautiful, except that there are too many of it. That was the kind of tree in Francie's backyard in Brooklyn. Its umbrellas curled over, around, and under her third-floor fire escape. An 11-year-old girl sitting on this fire escape could imagine that she was living in a tree. That's how it seemed to Francie every afternoon in Brooklyn. Hey, Francie, you gonna sit up there on that fire escape all day? I don't know. Is Mama home yet? No. Where are you going? Play ball in the lot. Francie, do we still have to get vaccinated Monday? Yes, we do. Artie Phillips says they stick a needle in you, and your arm turns black and drops off, and, and you die. I don't believe it. I'll ask Papa, Neely. Okay. I'm out here, Papa. Oh, hello, Francie. Hello, Papa. Move over and I'll come out. Is your mother home? She isn't home from work yet. Oh. Well, I'm going to work at Clamas tonight. Big wedding party. As a waiter or a singer? Both. Oh, it's cooler out here. You can see a lot of Brooklyn from a fire escape, can't you, Francie? People, and buildings, laundry, garbage cans. Organ grinders, carts with flowers on them, babies. Yeah, you can see plenty of those in Brooklyn, kitten. I'm going to rise in the world and get my family out of here. Next year will be better, you'll see. Next year, I'm going to get you a fire escape that looks out on a garden. Maybe even on a playground. That's right, Papa. Your ship will come in. My father was a man who never held one job long. I started waiting on tables when I was 12. And when I began to work, I said to him, Well, maybe your ship didn't come in, Pop, but mine's going to. You're the best singing waiter in Brooklyn. I've always wanted to be a real singer. The kind that comes out on the stage all dressed up. Well, I will be yet. And things are going to be different for you. I'm going to see to it that you get through school. Yes, Papa. Maybe Neely and I can find your ship and make it come in. Francie, if I ever do have any luck, 
You know what you and me are going to do? We're going on a trip. Just you and me? Yep, just the two of us. We'll go way down south where the cotton blossoms grow. Oh, Papa, I love you so much. I love you so much. Ah, oh, there's your mother. Hello, Katie. Oh, here you are. Mother, they're going to vaccinate us or we can't go back to school. Vaccinate you? What for? Smallpox. They're going to vaccinate Neely, too? Both of us. Mrs. Phillipson says your arm drops off and you die. Oh, now it isn't as bad as all that, baby. I was vaccinated thousands of times in my youth. And you didn't die? (laughs) Well, you see me here, don't you? When do you have to go? Monday. Can you go with us, Mama? No, honey. I have another cleaning job. Papa? I'm working Monday, too, baby. But there's nothing to it. Francie, don't let Neely see you're scared. After all, Neely's really such a baby yet. And you're a big girl. Yes, Mama. go faster. I, I don't want the time to go faster. I, I, I don't want to be vaccinated. The faster it goes, the quicker it'll be over. Let's go out and make mud pies. You used to like to make mud pies. All right. But let's go around back where none of the fellows will see us. All right, Neely. We'll go around back. <laughs> I guess this is it, Neely. Are you scared, Francie? No. Me neither. Oh, Neely. We forgot to wash. We've still got mud from the mud pies on us. Papa says good, clean dirt never hurt anyone. Well, we're here now. I'll go first, Neely. You sit out here on the bench. Don't go away now. I won't. All right, little girl. Right over here. Turn back your sleeve. Dirt. Dirt. We're ready, Doctor. Look at that arm. Built from morning to night. Don't these kids ever wash? There's no excuse for it, Doctor. Clean part of her arm for the vaccination. Well, let's get it over with. <gasps> yeah. That's all. You can go. My brother's next. His arm is just as dirty as mine, so don't be surprised. And you don't have to tell him. You told me. You don't have to tell him. Besides, it won't do no good. He's a boy, and he don't care if he's dirty. Go on in, Neely. It doesn't hurt at all. What are you doing out here on the fire escape at this time of night, baby? It hurts, Papa, and it itches. And Mama says if I scratch it, the whole arm will swell up and turn black and drop right off. And maybe I scratched it in my sleep. Maybe I'm going to die, Papa. (laughs) Well, come on in the house and let me see it, Francie. It's all swollen. Look. Ah, that's nothing at all. You should have seen my arm when I was vaccinated. It was twice as swollen. And it was red and white and blue instead of green and yellow like yours. Now... We'll just put a few drops of carbolic acid in some water and wash it out. And in the morning, it'll be much better. It will? Sure. And then I'll put on a nice, clean bandage all around it. Where will you get the bandage? Well, I'll I'll tear up one of my undershirts. Now, uh, this may hurt a little, but I'll be just as gentle as I can. Papa, I don't want to go back to that school. Why, baby? It's so big. And nobody likes anybody. Neely seems to like it. Neely's a boy. But you have to go to school. I found the most wonderful school, Papa. It's way out, and it's made of bricks. And there's no fence around the yard, and the playgrounds have grass in them, not cement. Oh, Papa, it's such a wonderful school. All right. We'll go have ourselves a look at it. Can we move near that? Well, no, we couldn't move right now. But you can't go to a school unless you live in that district. Well, you just leave it to me. We'll go out and look at that school tomorrow. And uh, 
I'll think of something. What do you think of it, Papa? What do you think? Yeah, this is a school, all right. This certainly is it. I've just got to go there, Papa. All right. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll walk around and pick out a nice house and then take down the number. Then I'll write a letter to your principal saying that you're moving there and you want to be transferred to this school. There's a house down at the corner. It has flowers all around it. That's where I'd like to live. All right. We'll go down and get the number. It's the kind of a house you read about in books. Uh, Francie. Yes, Papa? You know, what we are going to do is wrong, don't you? Is it, Papa? But it's a wrong to gain a bigger good. Like a white lie? Yeah, like a lie that helps someone out. So you must make up your mind that for never to do anything wrong, you've got to be late never and absent never. And you must never do anything to make them send a letter home through the mails. I'll always be good, Papa, if I can go to that school. Here's the house. 1724. I'll write to school tonight. Papa. Oh, Papa. Yes, Francie. Papa, my cup runneth over. Transfer. You'll probably both go to jail for this. Oh, Mama, it's such a beautiful school. Forty-eight blocks to walk every day. I wanted to go there, Katie. I want her to learn that there are other worlds, and that those other worlds are not out of her reach. Yeah, they're wonderful, ain't they? Next to having those things, I like to look at them. They're just to look at, Neely. No one has them. Look at that doll. She has real hair, and her eyes open and shut. Here's the auditorium, kids. I'll be outside waiting for you when you're through. Now, remember, this is a Christmas party for children of all faiths, and your Aunt Abby bought you the tickets for a Christmas present, so have a good time. I wish you could come, Papa. Oh, it's only for kids, baby. Now, you go in and have a good time. Come on, Neely. There's some seats down there, Francie. Children. Children, we have a special surprise for you. As you see, here is a little girl with a beautiful doll. This little girl's name is Mary. And she wants to give the doll to some poor little girl in the audience who is also named Mary. Now, is there any poor little girl in the audience named Mary? Who does she think she is? Calling people poor. It's just like the doll in the window, Neely. No Marys in the audience? Oh, well, that's too bad. Little Mary will have to take the doll home again. My, my name is Mary. Francie! Oh, we do have a Mary. A very bashful Mary. <laughs> Papa, Papa! 
What are you doing out so soon, Francie? Well, what's that you're carrying? A doll. It was a prize. Papa, do you think Mama would let me take Mary for my confirmation name? No, I don't, baby. Where's Neely? He's still inside. Why don't you think she'd let me take the name Mary? Because when you were christened, you were named Francis after Andy's girl. I know. But you were also named after Katie's mother. Your real name is Mary Francis Nolan. Oh, Papa. Mr. Hilton, James Dunn, and Connie Marshall will be back with us in a moment. But first, they say that to acknowledge a debt is a sign of greatness. And surely there can be no doubt about the greatness of Thomas Edison. This electrical genius acknowledged his debt in these words. My mother was the making of me. She was so true, so sure of me, and I felt that I had someone to live for, someone I must not disappoint. Surely any mother must treasure words like these for the heartfelt feeling they convey. And certainly, it is not surprising that you should find these very words on a Hallmark card, just one of the many appropriate Mother's Day greetings. A week from Sunday, May 8th is the day, so don't forget. Stop in this weekend at the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards. Make your selection easily from the wide variety Hallmark offers. Every card is appealingly beautiful, not only in outward design and color and quality, but in the perfection of saying just what you want to say, the way you want to say it this Mother's Day. Here again is James Hilton to present James Dunn in the second act of Betty Smith's A Tree Grows in Brooklyn with Connie Marshall. Time went on as it does everywhere, even in Brooklyn. Spring came, and summer, and winter again. And suddenly Francie was 14, and it was almost Christmas again. But nothing was right about Christmas this year in Brooklyn, because something was wrong with Johnny. He came and went almost without speaking. His hands trembled badly. He could hardly hold the fork when he was eating. And suddenly he looked very old. Katie went about white and quiet, as though she were carrying the tragedy within herself. One night, Francie woke in the middle of the night. You won, Papa. I, I, I won? You finished the song before I opened the door. Yeah. I finished the song, <coughs> I guess. Papa? Turn out the lights and go back to bed, Francie. Papa, are you sick? No. <coughs> I'm all right, Francie. Everything seems to be changing so. I don't want things to change. Well, how are things changing, Francie? It seemed to me things were staying just, <coughs> just the same. No, Papa. The scales at the tea store aren't bright and shiny like they used to be. And things that used to be exciting aren't exciting anymore. Like selling junk and going to the delicatessen for a pickle. And pretending like we used to. Oh, I see. When we didn't have enough money for food, we'd pretend we were explorers discovering the North Pole. And that we were trapped in a cave with just a little food. And we had to make it last until help came. Mm -hmm. When explorers get hungry and suffer like that, it's for a reason. Something big comes out of it. They discover the North Pole. But what big thing comes out of us being hungry like that? Well, you found the catch in it, baby. You found the catch in it. You have a bad case. <laughs> a very bad case. Of what? Of growing up. <laughs> Go on now. <coughs> Get to bed. I I'm going out again. Why, Papa? Well, I, <laughs> I forgot something. Never mind, kitten. It's all right. You go to bed. I want to walk a bit longer. <coughs> go on now. Good.
Good night. Good night, Papa. just before dawn. It was your father. You were asleep. I had to go to the hospital. They found him in the street, unconscious. Pneumonia. Your father is dead. Papa? Dead? You're not to cry for him. He's out of it now. And maybe he's luckier than we are. to your writing. I don't know, Miss Gardner. You were one of my best pupils. You wrote so prettily. But these last compositions, Francie, all about poverty and starvation. Those are ugly subjects. What does one write about? Well, one delves into the imagination and finds beauty there. Francie, these stories don't sound like you. They seem so sordid. Sordid? What does sordid mean? What did I tell you when you don't know a word? Go to the dictionary. Sorted. 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 Here. Sorted. Filthy. Filthy? Papa wore a clean shirt and collar every day of his life. He shined his shoes sometimes twice a day. We aren't discussing your father. Dirty! Papa had his own mug at the barber shop. Gross. Gross. Papa was a dancer. He was slender and quick. Sorted. Also mean and low. Why, everyone loved Papa. Everyone. Don't you ever dare use that word about us. Francie. Us? We were talking about your compositions. Why, Francis, I'm surprised. A well-behaved girl like you. Talking like that to your teacher the week before graduation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lovely, Francie. I'm sorry I can't go to your graduation, but with Neely graduating the same night and both of you in different schools, you see, your father planned that he... That he would go with me. It's all right, Mama. I can go alone. Papa will be there, too. No. Papa's dead. It was a lovely graduation, wasn't it, Francie? Yes, Miss Gardner. Good night. Aren't you going in the classroom to get your book? I took them this afternoon. Francie, you want to get your flowers. I haven't any flowers, Miss Gardner. Come and see. Look at your desk, Francie. Red roses. Whose are they? Look at the card. It says, it says, Mary Francis Nolan. Open the car. Papa, it says, for Francie on graduation day, 
love from Pop? Miss Gardner, he can't be dead. He sent me flowers. He sent me flowers. He gave me the money a year ago, and that card all written out. He said, when Francie graduates, send her some flowers for me, in case I forget. Oh, Miss Gardner. Go ahead and cry, Francie. Try. In a little while, we'll go and meet your mother and Neely. Oh, Miss Gardner, he isn't really dead, is he? Not when he can come like this when I needed him so much. Not while people live who remember what he was like and love him. Oh, no. John Nolan will never be dead, Francis. He lives on in you and Neely. I was wrong. There is a God. Oh, Miss Gardner, there is a God. And isn't it wonderful? Papa knows him. Papa knows him. <laughs> Mr. Hilton will be back with James Dunn and Connie Marshall in just a moment. Remember the day you broke your favorite doll and your mother mended it so magically? When you fell from the tree and she picked you up so tenderly? Or later still, when your heart broke over your first love? Remember how she put it back together again with the wisdom only mothers know? Whatever your memories of your mother, whether she's near or far away, you do want to remember her this Mother's Day. What shall you say to her? Anything or everything that's in your heart. And you'll find it said perfectly in a Hallmark card. You might choose a simple card with words of heartfelt love, a beautiful card of satin and silver and sincere affection, or the gay new Hallmark card that opens up into a golden crown. Whatever your taste and whatever your budget, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. Mother's Day is a week from Sunday, May 8th. So before then, visit the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards for your Mother's Day remembrance. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, James Dunn and Connie Marshall, for an outstanding night here on our Hallmark Playhouse. You have given us a warm and tender picture of an American family. It's been a great thrill for me, Mr. Hilton, because I've always wanted to play Francie. Also, will you thank the Hallmark Company for me for the very lovely gift of a portfolio of the Hallmark Little Women dolls. You know, I'm a collector of Hallmark dolls. I have the whole set of the Hallmark dolls of the nations. They're just wonderful. And may I say that it's been a pleasure for me too, Mr. Hilton? What Connie says about Hallmark dolls really goes for all the Hallmark cards. You just expect Hallmark to be associated with the best. We do appreciate that compliment, Mr. Dunn, and we hope you and Miss Marshall will visit us again. And please listen next week when we present a story most appropriate to the time, Kathleen Norris's well-known novel, Mother, starring Linda Darnell. And the following week, James Thurber's great story of baseball, You Could Look It Up, starring William Frawley. And after that, Sir Arthur Pinero's play, Enchanted Cottage. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Betty Smith's A Tree Grows in Brooklyn was adapted for radio by Jean Holloway. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs>